Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. Crime is the theme of the week in New York, something that many New Yorkers are now experiencing firsthand. Gun crime, in particular, has become a major issue in many of the state's urban areas. According to state data, there were about 3,200 more violent crimes with a gun last year compared to 2019 in New York. That's a jump of 40 percent. And we know that shootings are still on the rise here. In New York City alone, the number of shootings were up by more than 50 percent through at least March compared to last year. And cities like Albany and Rochester are experiencing their own problems with gun violence. But here's the problem. No one really knows what's going to fix it. And there's a lot of disagreement over strategy. Governor Cuomo this week unveiled his own plan to curb gun crime in New York, with the state now committing $138 million to the effort. That money will be used on intervention services, jobs programs, outreach, and more. And Cuomo also declared gun violence a disaster emergency in New York, giving him more power to address the problem. Time is not on our side. Begin by acknowledging the problem. And you know what the problem is? It is a statewide problem, and it is an emergency. And I want the people of the state to understand that. And I want them to respond to the emergency for the way it is. But not everyone's happy with Cuomo's strategy to curb gun violence, and New York Attorney General Letitia James also had a pretty big week. Let's talk about that and more with our panel this week. John Campbell is from the USA Today Network, and Karen DeWitt is from New York State Public Radio. Thank hey. you both for being here. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. So let's talk first about Cuomo's gun plan. Uh, I'll, either of you, John, what does this give the governor power to do? Because it's a new emergency in the state. We've had about two weeks without an emergency, so now we're <laughs> entering a new one. Well, it, he, he doesn't have quite as much latitude as he did during the COVID emergency, which he got some additional power from the legislature through. But one of the big things that lets him do is, is move money a little easier. Mm -hmm. It allows him to uh, set up the Office of, of Gun Violence Prevention, things like that. That's what he announced. Uh, he said he's, he's going to have uh, declare hot spots where he can more easily send resources, whether that's state police resources or some pots of money that he has uh, an ability to, to move. And so it, it, it is an administrative thing, largely, that allows him to, a, a little more flexibility. Well, that's why it's puzzling, because none of this needs an emergency order. He could mm. do all of this. The $138 million that he wants to send to programs was already in the state budget. Right, this is um, not the, new money. All he's doing is really suspending the state's procurement laws and the oversight to make sure that the money goes to the right places and is spent properly. Well, that's what I was thinking. Is it that the money can go faster because it has less review, like by the yeah. controller's yeah, office? Yeah, the controller will be shut out of it. There's no review to it. Um, but I think also he just, you know, I mean, if you look at it face value, obviously he wants to call attention to an issue that people are concerned about. And, you know, he feels like politically he had a lot of, you know, success. Even though it was a terrible time during COVID, he was very popular when we had a state of emergency. Everybody kind of had to listen to him. Is school going to be open today? Do I go to work? And I think, you know, maybe part of it is wanting to regain some of that loss because now, you know, most New Yorkers don't want him to run for another term. Right. He's embroiled in a lot of scandals and he's sort of trying to get on top of the narrative here for a legitimate issue. But of course, being Andrew Cuomo, there's also political concerns as well. Oh, yeah. And I think he could have very easily have said, I'm taking seven steps against gun violence today. It's very important. You know, we got to get this under control, but he didn't have to take special powers to do it. It's, you know, a state of emergency is something that kind of stops you in your track, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and, and it's, it's, there's no doubt that that was part of the calculation. You know, it, in reality, it's, it's much more bureaucratic. Uh, right. You know, it doesn't, it, it's not a state of emergency in like that a, a county level can do where you can't travel unnecessarily, things right. like that. I mean, yeah. it, it is, it's more bureaucratic than that, but it is, it has a really jarring name that, that gets people's attention. I'll tell you one of the things he's not doing is revisiting a number of criminal justice reforms and changes mm. that have happened in the last couple of years under the, the Democrats in the legislature Good in point. Cuomo. Yeah, including the bail reform, you know, changes to parole, the so-called raise the age, treating 16 and 17 year olds not as adults in the prison system, but as juveniles, which Republicans and district attorneys say, you know, this might be part of the problem. Well, Republicans are saying is part of the problem. You can't prove <laughs> right. that, but it's something that perhaps 
should be looked at as part of this, but that was not mentioned at all. Right, we're gonna hear from Andrew Giuliani in a few minutes, and he makes that case as well, that repealing bail reform would lower the crime rate. And it, it, that's a tough topic too. Mm -hmm. I've talked to people about this. There hasn't been really any empirical research or right. data on whether bail reform and discovery reform has caused the, the crime spike. Right, but that's not gonna stop it from becoming a major political issue. Exactly. I mean, that is, uh, you've got every state lawmaker up for re-election next year. You have, <clears throat> excuse me, every state office, uh, statewide office holder up for, for re-election next year, including the governor. And there's no doubt that the Republicans are gonna make that a central theme. But also, you know, we've already seen crime and a, a rise in crime, even if it's only a perceived rise in crime, become a major issue in the New York City mayor's race, and it mm -hmm. helped propel Eric Adams to the mayor's office. So yeah. crime right now is a major political issue, uh, and, and I, I have little doubt that it will be next year as well. That's a great segue, actually. So mm -hmm. Attorney General Tish James was in Syracuse this week. She also had a giant opioid settlement that we made right. it to. Yeah. But she was in Syracuse this week. She was in Albany a few weeks ago for a similar event where she was announcing takedown of, of some drug rings and indictments of, like, tens of people. I think it was more than 80 people in Syracuse or more than 70. And it made me wonder if she is trying to do these events because she knows that politically crime is very popular. I don't, I don't think it's all politics, obviously. I think mm -hmm. her office is working very hard on this. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if this is a good opportunity for her to position herself for a run for governor next year. Well, whether intentional or not, it is fitting into the times. And she's right. doing tangible things, working with local law enforcement, hauling people off who may be responsible for some of these shootings because it seems like it's really just a small number of people in each community who are committing these crimes. It's not like everybody's gone wild. It's like you have to focus on, you know, certain certain people for this that are that are actual criminals and not punish people who aren't. But yeah, it seems like, you know, that's something that she's doing, she's getting attention for. And could that position her for a run for governor? I mean, as John just said, it worked for Eric Adams. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, uh, Eric Adams also had the African-American community. He has, he has credibility because he was an ex-cop, so he can talk about, you know, law enforcement more. And in the same way that I think that she can do that, too. I'm attorney general. You right. know, I'm the first uh, black woman who's attorney general. So she can walk that line a little bit better. But, yeah, I mean, every, you know, it's going to be over a year till the next election. But if crime remains an issue, she is positioning herself very well for that. I think so too. Well, and it's also, you know, these drug busts that, that, you know, they're doing very publicly and they're having, you know, the big press conferences mm -hmm. with the guns laid out at the right. table. And the drug I mean, it is a, a tactic that we've seen a lot for a long time from law enforcement as a way to send a message to other people who may be involved in the drug trade. That said, you know, as we've seen with Andrew Cuomo, as we've seen with uh, with Elliot Spitzer, the Attorney General's office can be used as a platform to run for higher office, and in, in large part because you're doing things like that. You're doing the drug bust. You're doing the opioid settlements with, with the Sackler family and, and Purdue Pharma that's you know $4.5 billion. It is very easy to look like the, the, you know, the white knight coming in exactly. to save the day. That's what exactly. I was going to say. So right. you, it, don't, you don't have to run state government. Right. You don't have to run the subways, which are like filling with water this week, and it's all over social media. You can right. do like, you can pick and choose your issues. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, there's a reason why they call the AG's office aspiring governor. Right. There's a reason. <laughs> Andrew Cuomo did the same thing. Mm -hmm. He was AG before he became governor. Exactly. I'm wondering what her strategy is, and, and we don't know. We just don't know. And the other thing mm -hmm. is, as far as gun crime goes, and I said this earlier in the show, we just don't really know what the solution is. You know, you can <clears throat> choose five or six different strategies, and hopefully one works. And I think certainly all of us hope the governor's plan for curbing gun crime works, but it's something that I think people are thinking about more than ever now. Yeah, and it seems like they need to look at everything, including some of the laws they passed. You know, yeah. politics aside, there's no harm in just taking a look. Right. Well, we'll see what the legislature does. They, they may come back in the next few weeks. We don't know. That's well, Cuomo all said he didn't need them. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> you know, who needs them? But yeah. we got to leave it there. Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio, John Campbell from the USA Today Network, thank you both so much. You're welcome. Thank you.